start with a song. Just live the light on my everybody. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I want to say, Jesus gave it to me. Listen. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as humble as we know how, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. We want to give thanks unto your holy name, Lord God. Lord God, we love you. We need you. We trust you. Lord God, we are going to attempt to study your word. What it is you'd have us to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow, I never heard that. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to go to the book of Psalms. I just felt like we're going to change what we're doing. Just so you know, hey, what's going on, bro? We are doing we are doing basic Bible studies. Now, some people say the acronym for the Bible is Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth. That's right. But some people say that, some people don't. I just you know, but I want what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a good foundation um, because uh, uh, fundamentals are incredibly important. Um, I, I like football. I go to football, right? Now, now professional football, one thing, but I kind of like high school football. Mm -hmm. And one thing I notice is that when I go to football games, when the team gets behind, the coaches see it. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. It seems like they panic and they start trying to throw the ball and they try. They just just stick with the fundamentals. And but the team that sticks with fundamentals, they seem to work through the problems and somehow they get back in the game. Why am I saying that? Because when we find ourselves in positions of, of when we find ourselves in, oh Lord, how am I going to pay this light bill? We start doing crazy stuff, running, panicking, going down to, uh, now I ain't trying to bash nobody's business, going down trying to get those payday loans and all these different things when we really, off. yeah, scratch <laughs> off. But we just digging the hole deeper and deeper and deeper. So what we, what I want us to do, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, let's learn how to use the fundamentals. And what's one of the fundamentals? Let's learn how to, like, like, like right now, how we're devoting our time, you know, to, 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 to spend some time with God, or, or to the best that we think we are. Obedience and discipline. Obedience and discipline. That's that's We talked about that last week, and we said that discipline. I think she said integrity. She brought up integrity, but I was saying discipline is the ability to do what you do when no one's watching. Right. When you think you're in a dark space and no one's watching and, and it's all quiet, what you do then is who you really are. Mm -hmm. See? And, and and now you done brought that back up. And when we in the, when we in, when we in the dark talking about wicked, when we doing our wicked acts in the dark, and then we come back in the light. The wickedness is still on us. So don't think that, okay, they don't know, they don't know that I do this. So I'm gonna do this in the dark. And when I come around them, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna be the no, that wickedness is still around you. Yeah, and it's holding you down. So we're trying to get some fundamentals because we need some ways to deal with our wickedness. Not just your wickedness, our wickedness. And one of the ways that we have to deal with it is with, through and with the word of God. You know what I like about the word of God? Um, uh, one of the, one of the most important, uh, things to do is to, uh, uh read, read. It's fundamental. It's fundamental. Uh, I, I've already said this. Many other billionaires say that reading is what they, they spend most of their day reading. Not looking at the stock market or trying to buy new businesses, but reading. So when you decide, now comes the question is, what am I going to read? 
Well, if we what was it? If we practice reading this Bible, the good thing about the Bible is that it never changes. Come I love on. that. All right. So, uh, on a lot of people that are very successful in life, they meditate. Medita oh yeah. So meditation could help you find what you need to read with God. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that just get, get out of this world and, and get a clear, clear message from God. You know what I mean? Yeah, I want to just, since you said that, I want to just expose something about myself. What I do, and, and I, you can try this at home. One of the things I did, and it changed my life, and it's continually changing my life, and I, I, I meditate. And, you know, it's strange enough, the person that, and I say I meditate 30, for 30 minutes. It's, it, now, you can say I just meditate until I feel, no. I do it because I want to make sure that I, I stay consistent with my time. You see what I'm saying? So I meditate for 30 minutes. And what I do when I'm meditating, and, and I try my best not to allow, like whatever you're thinking about right now, you can't really hear me, I try not to let that happen. I try to let God have control of my mind for 30 minutes. That's, that's hard, I know you think. Because once you do that, at first it'll be easy. But so many things will start happening in your life. It'll be harder to just not, you know, to block out all of that stuff, you know. So I try to give God the complete control of my mind for 30 minutes every day. You can try that. Go ahead. We got, that's our meditation room. Meditation room, she and, said. And, uh, wow. John, John is consistent in it. And consistent. He has an app on his phone, too, through the Bible app. It's called Encounter. Encounter. And I do it sometimes, but he is consistent. Is it, is he yeah. is. He's really now, consistent. Now, I want to share something with you. Dude, it's critically important. Now understand something. When you have an empty room, there and really, man, you know I was gonna talk about spirits today, but on my way here, God just changed. It. There are spirits fighting, knocking at the door for that empty room. They want to get in that empty room. Mm -hmm. I see some empty space. And some imps want to be in there. It ain't it, 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 some, it's some evil spirits want to be in there. You heard your grandma say, an idle mind is what? The, devil the devil's workshop. workshop. So why are you sitting there idle? The devil trying to get in. Mm -hmm. He ain't just going to say, okay, they just sitting there idle. I'm going to leave. No, no, no. He's trying to get in. Hold on. So my point is, we have to make sure that when we're meditating, we have, we our motivation is God. Jesus Christ is our motivation. Understand what we have, man. So, so when you start getting sober, um, you have all these uh, voids that the devils took over. So when you start emptying those voids out, you know, like meditation, you got to start replacing them with God's word and God's spirit and all that stuff. Because if you don't and you just leave it empty for the devil to come back in there, that's it. You just, you're just repeating it over and over again. And, he, uh, yeah. You give him, a, you just give him a crack. He'll get in. There. That's all. That's what the word says. That's when it. the evil spirit goes out of the bed. It goes out to seek his dry places, and he'd come back to the place that he, he was. If he find it swept and garnished, but ain't nothing changed, yeah. he'll come back in. He'll bring seven of his buddies with him. Seven. What? And your last estate will be worse than your first. Yeah. What you yeah, say? You, and yeah. I have I have experienced that. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't ever want to go back to them seven and the yeah. yeah. And what yeah. about them devils that uh book book uh the seven brothers of seek the <laughs> book they were butt naked running out of there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, because, no, she, what? Okay, I'm Reservation. Somebody, had, they were praying for somebody. Mm -hmm. And they weren't in the Holy Spirit. Right. See, you, you, you got to understand that, that when you're anointed, there's power. You, you have to know mm -hmm. that there are spirit. Okay. If you go by the liquor store, sometimes the liquor store is called liquor spirits. store. But it's also called spirits. Uh -huh. It has spirits in it. There are th I think I talked about it. Make sure that when we use the word spirit in the Bible, that a, a, a capital S. Yes. That's the Holy Spirit. Yes. Anytime we get a lowercase S, right? We 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 it's from some other source. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah. They are. They got the spirit of turpentine, uh -huh. alcohol, nah. sex, all kinds of spirits. You you, you <laughs> couldn't go. You know, <laughs> all you need to know is that there there is a spirit of God and there is another spirit. That's it. You know when the Holy Spirit's involved is when you like you don't even know somebody and God has you go up to that person and do something like say give them some money. Right. And they'll tell you, man, you know, yesterday I was 
stressing my right. heart out mm -hmm. about this, then you knew that the Holy Spirit was, you was being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Right. You'll know. You know, right. when you give something, don't expect nothing. Right. You know. Right. I, I will say this, that when you're operating in the Spirit of God, the key to it is that you're looking in the mirror versus pointing fingers. In other words, you're not so much trying to find, okay, I can tell you got a bad spirit, Doc. No, 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 no. You need to be continually working on your own spirit. You need to be you need to be focusing on God yourself. You missed our speech about focusing on God, keep our mind. But we have to keep our mind on Christ. That's what we have to do. Now, let's get into this word because we see, if we, I'm gonna tell you what, if we don't, Get into the word. We're gonna be floating and floating and floating. We're not gonna get anything done. Discipline. Yeah, discipline. discipline. We have to stay with God on point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've seen a ship. Uh, if you ever flown, everybody flown an airplane before. Mm -hmm. Those things take off in the air, and I'd be like, now, how do they know where they going? How? I mean, <laughs> I mean that now <laughs> is so is so accurate yeah. that they on the seat thing they'll tell you how long it's gonna take. Yeah. When are you going to get that? They know all of that. Because yeah. they're got her. They, they have to stay on course. Yeah. Now, if they get up in the air and start going different courses, it's over with. That's right. All right. Now, let's go to Psalms 23. So, we're going to stay on course. That's what we're going to do so we can land at a certain place. Okay? All right. The first thing, verse number one. I'm going to please somebody read the verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Okay, key word that sticks out to me. You may have another one. Shepherd. What is a shepherd? A leader. A leader. Awesome. A caretaker. A caretaker. Okay. The, a guy. He's a sheep herder. He's the one that leads the sheep. They're also a, a sheep that it has a bell on it. That is, when they hear that bell ring, they follow that sheep. Yeah, I forgot what they call it, but All that's, right, yeah. But I'm going to tell you what God does, and this this goes along with this, and there's always that one sheep that wants to run off. Uh -huh. You know what they do to that sheep? Break his leg. Break his leg. Yeah. So he stays with the pack. And that's what God done to me. Right. Because I wouldn't stay with the pack. You wouldn't stay with the pack. Uh-uh. He's talking about physically. Physically? Yeah, I mean, seriously. Man, I should have talked about spirit today, because everything that we talking about is really what I was going to talk it's about. Spirit. I just changed it at the last minute. I said, I want to talk about spirit. Do I don't know. You need to go back. When you want to tell God your plans, he's going to let that That's it. So, so a shepherd, now I know why. We're going to come back to it later, okay. but I want to give us some more foundation. Okay. I didn't want to talk about spirit, because that could get us way yeah, out. Yeah. So I said, let's talk about this right here. So let's talk about shepherd. They said a shepherd is a leader or a guide. Okay? All right. Now, understand something about a, a, a good shepherd. Everybody said a good shepherd. Because you got some shepherds that are good and some shepherds that are. See, here's the thing about a good shepherd. He has, I'm going to use sheep, right? He has his sheep's best interest in mind. Now, uh, man, the Bible describes a, a hireling. You know what a hireling is? They look like shepherds. They sound like shepherds. But 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 they're not a shepherd. What was that word? Hireling. Hire, it's in the Bible. Listen, here's the thing. Now, I, I so happen to have been to, like, just because when I was in the military, I went to where, like, Macedonia, where all these, I see some real-life shepherds. I, I used to have pictures, and I left them. I lost them. But a shepherd, what happens is, uh, we've got 300 sheep, right? And five shepherds. When a particular shepherd comes up and says, hey, sheep, come here. Only his sheep come. That's right. The Bible describes it as, my sheep know my voice. So when we have a good shepherd, the sheep will know their voice. Now, it probably some things to it, like I don't know too much. Like he said, one shepherd, one one. Uh, one sheep has a bell, bell so yeah. when the other sheep hear that particular bell they know to move I don't know but they know when they're shepherd the rest of the pe people's sheep they're going to stay there mm -hmm. but my sheep are coming because they are my sheep and they know my voice mm -hmm. but I'm going to tell you one thing about they the reason that they responded to my voice because I'm a good shepherd what is a good shepherd? I'm glad you asked a good <laughs> shepherd Make sure that his sheep are taken care of. That's right. 
A good shepherd will know that it's actually more important. I better go take care of my sheep before I take care of myself. But at the same time, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's impossible to take care of sheep. All right. When you want, listen, when I first became a dad and my first, I didn't have my first child till I was 23 years old. That's kind of late because I'm from Atlanta and all my old boys would have his children at 16, 15, 17. So I, I was 23 when I had my first when I had my first child. Now, of course, now this going to stay. We just changed the subject. Uh, uh, mama's baby, papa maybe. You know, y'all right, right, can put right. that where y'all want. But when I had my first child, it was 23. All right, now, what does that mean? I said, God, I don't know what to do. That's, I'm just being completely. So I said, God said, look, can you take care of your arm? That's why you don't got to say. I said, I, can, I, I pretty much can take care of my arm. He said, well, if you can take care of yourself, then you can just, that'll, that'll extend down to your kids. So I think the key was just to make sure that I took care of myself. What am I saying? To be a good shepherd, the first thing we got to do, we got to make sure we're doing self-care. We got to make sure we're doing self-care. Because you know what? Your sheep hear what you, they see what you're doing more than they hear what you're saying. You study telling them, don't, don't eat 17 times a day. And you're eating 19 times a day. He said, well, why are you telling me not to eat 17 times a day? You eat 19 times a day. I really can see what you're saying, brother, than I can hear what you, you see what I'm saying? I, I, I see what you're doing more than I hear what you're saying. I just use food, but you can put, fill in the blank with whatever it is that you don't want your, your followers to do, and you're too busy doing it. They Amen? Don't do it. They don't do it. They see. Yeah. How can you be a good leader and you're not even taking care of yourself? That's the first step. But at the same time, remember, your followers are more important than you. You got to make sure that you're taking care of the, the people that you're responsible for. You have to be sure of that. Come on. All right, so to become a good shepherd, in my, my in opinion. In your opinion. All right. So for planes, for instance, a little kid asked, said, hey, that plane looks so small up in the air. It does. Uh -huh. You know what? He says, son. He said, I'm going to tell you like, like, about God. This is how God works. You may look far away, you look small. But the closer you get to that airport, you see how big he gets. See, wow. All right? Wow. So the closer you get to God, the bigger he is, the better he makes you a shepherd. Wow. You know? And I told him it was deep. He went to the bottom of the ocean. I don't know how to do it. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, a, a willing vessel yes. Yes. with obedience. That when God speaks, I, I move. Wow. Let, let me, let me, that's awesome. Let me tell you something else about a shepherd that I noticed since we're using the shepherd. When I saw those shepherds out there with those sheep, right? You know what? When, when they had to take them to new grazing lands, mm -hmm. um, that's a hard thing. They had this thing in their hand, a uh, stick, yeah. a staff. Yeah. So now, yeah. some pictures of Jesus has a, a, a hook. Yeah. And you know what the hook is for, like you say. Right. That, right. That, right. That, yeah. Right. Because the sheep is only thinking about eating grass. I mean, you, did you know that? Yeah. They eat grass all day. So they, and the best grass is in the most dangerous places, high up in the sky. And stuff. So it doesn't matter that they get ready to fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. They're only looking at the grass. So sometimes you got to grab them with the hook. But some of the shepherds I seen, they didn't have a hook. Mm -hmm. They had a ball on top of the head. Mm -hmm. You know what the ball was for? But if those sheep get out of the line, they crack them upside the head. Get back over there. That's a pain. For them. But were they cracking them upside the head because they didn't like them or because they were trying to protect them? They, they were trying to protect them. Now, some of us understand some have been cracked upside the head by God. And we can take that crack and say, wait a minute. Uh -huh. God, that way, I don't like that. God, <laughs> but I'm trying to help you. Huh? God, dis God disciplines those he loves. You know what's bad, though, sis? Is when, you know, I, my, I, <laughs> I used to see my aunt uh, with my, my, uh, my, my cousin. And that, he was just standing there and went crying. Yeah. He had got immune. Uh, he just didn't care. He was just at the fire. Some of us are like that. God has cracked us out the head and we just so defiant that we just standing there like ain't nothing happened. 
Do you realize that God is trying to get your attention and pull you back in? He, why? Because he loves you. He's trying to help you. We think that we're supposed to be in this position. You know, sometimes you get in a position and say, well, I guess this is how my life is. No, yes, just God saying, get back in here so I could be a blessing to you. Why? Because I'm a good shepherd. I'm a good leader. I'm a good guy. But here is the problem. You are a horrible follower. Uh -huh. mm. That's right. Horrible follower. Man, there are wolves out there. Bear. Listen, bear. And the shepherd sees it, hears it, smells it, and says, we got to go. But no, everybody say, but no. But no. We want to stand there and say, listen, Mr. Shepherd, I'm eating grass right now. I'm not going anywhere. And here comes the wolf. Huh? Unbeknown to the shepherd. You know, you know how that happens when, when the sheep think they know more than the shepherd. <coughs> when, when we as sheep, I'm not saying that, when we as sheep begin to think we know more than the shepherd, we, don't, we do not heed to the warnings from the shepherd. Why? Why, Mr. Shepherd? Matter of fact, you know people that question every time every time you say something, they're gonna question. Well, why we gotta do it like that? We never did it like that. We, it, it's a change coming on. Huh? Oh, and you yeah. need to get with the change. You need to get with the change or you're gonna be left. Come on, what do you have? Good with, they always want their will. And I tell you what, until I learn to turn my will over to God, yeah. I got understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Now that's where most people uh, mess up. I don't want to do it. Why would I want to do that? Why? God sees yeah. something you don't. That's it. His ways are higher than our ways. We talked about that. That's ways. right. You know what I'm saying? That's what we <laughs> that's what we miss out on. And hey, man, I know enough about God that uh, I've had my my father has whooped my butt, son. I'm yeah. telling you right now, right. my butt. Right. But that's because he loves me. That's why he loves me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. Right now, if a fire alarm and I, well, I don't even see it, but well, there's the thing. If, that's emergency light. But if a fire alarm goes off right now, the reality, we got to make a decision. Is that a real fire alarm? Is that a fake fire alarm? Is that, that did the fire alarm go off for real? Is it a mistake? I don't know. So what do we got to do? Get out of the building. Let's get out of the building. <laughs> Even if it's a we'll fake fire alarm, <laughs> let's go ahead and heed to the warning. Huh? Because we talked about focusing and we talked about concentrating. See, and when one thing about concentrating, I want you meditating. Once we meditate, what happens is, um, uh, like a piano, um, you get tuned in. You know how a good time. You got to keep plugging the string, do 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 do, and change it. Then okay, now I hear better. The pitch. The pitch is better. I can clearly hear the voice of God. How? Because I've been meditating. So now that that warning come, I can clearly hear the warning and I can move. Whereas if we are being stubborn, uh -huh, listen, the only time we open our Bible is when somebody in front of us trying to tell us something. You got to open your Bible on your own. The only time we pray is, is if somebody decides to pray for us. You got to pray on your own. Refuse to give money to, you know, you know, you could give money to the church and that's an offering, but you don't even do charitable giving. I used to be like, how in the heck do I pay, pray continually, right? Yeah. So God's like, well, because I'm with you at all times. All the time. All the time. Don't make a dang what it is. Hey, Lord, I lost my pencil. I need you to help me find it. Okay. If he'll help you with find the pencil, son, he'll help you do anything. Yeah, for me. And that's the way I'll use it. Come you on. You know what I mean? It's just a conversation with God. Be with you. Talk to him all the time. We complicated. If we get the hell out of the way, he can do his thing. <laughs> it's hard to do, man. Here, 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 here lies the thing. What we have to do, right? We have to choose who our shepherd is. See, a sheep does not have an opportunity to choose who their shepherd is. We, we think the free will is we can do what we want to. Now, free will is the ability to choose who your shepherd is. 
who will yeah, use certain. Yeah, yeah. Remember, Jeremiah uh, in the book said, uh, for, as for me and my house. We will. We sir, will sir. You know why God gives you free will? Come on. Why would you want to be a robot? Right. <laughs> right. Right. So if God gives you free will and you fall in love with him, it's the most genuine love. It's a genuine love. Now we're in love, for real. Because you chose me. We choke. We have to choose God as our shepherd. And now, understand. I, I was saying the church, but if we gotta go back. It says, "The Lord All right. is our shepherd. my shepherd. shepherd." Who is my shepherd? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Let's convert whoever we had been using as our shepherd, and let us make the Lord our shepherd today. Let us make the Lord as my shepherd now. Why should I make the Lord my shepherd? I'm glad you asked. Why? <laughs> Somebody said, why, why should I should make, make the Lord, the Lord my shepherd? Why? All these shepherds out here, lowercase s shepherds. Oh, we just a lot of shepherds out there. But why? Remember, uh, we're standing in the pen with all these sheep. And why is that particular shepherd? Why should I say, okay, I hear the voice of that shepherd why should I move? I'm glad you asked. Because he said right here, I shall not want. How do I stop wanting so much? Where is my, why do I have a void in my life? Because God is not your shepherd. You, know, you are I, not listening to the voice of God. I deal with a lot of people, they always question, <clears throat> well, why do you, why you think you're your God? You know, uh, I've done all this stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, buddy. If you ain't if you ain't read this word and you ain't praying, you ain't done nothing. Right. So for you to sit here and tell me I've done everything I could to build a relationship with God, it ain't happened for me. I'm like, bro, let me tell you how it happened for me. Uh -huh. Somebody gave me a book. You know the first book I read? 2 Corinthians chapter 13 on the book of love. Uh -huh. I read it. And I was so amazed by it, I started reading more, and I started applying it to my life. It started producing the fruit, and it made me a man I never thought I'd be. Right. Right? So I told the person, I said, you know what, man? Um, God's not going to do it for you. God gives you strength, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, not uh -huh. for him to do it, for you to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting here, everybody was waiting on God. Right. But God waiting on you? Yeah. Right. He, I want everybody to understand something. Please understand it. Please understand it. I don't care if you got five hundred billion dollars. You need God. See, see, the thing we can start thinking that this is some poor man's God. You know, just on old read the only time I need God is when I don't have no money and don't have nowhere to go. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, Jesus called one person a fool. You know who he called a fool? He said, This guy said, I've got so much stuff that I'm going to build another barn. And so I can put the rest of my stuff in. Right. Jesus said, you fool. Right. You don't know that your spirit will be required today. You don't know. No man knows the day or the hour. So the key is not, and I'm not saying, see, and then you can start saying, I'm bashing people that's got a lot of stuff. Nah, no. man, God has blessed you. But that Get your stuff. Nothing. All I'm saying is, you need a good shepherd. Huh? I, yeah, you need a good shepherd because the ultimate goal is see it here. It, the only reason, the only reason that you don't have fifty million dollars right now is because you don't know what to do with it. I'm sure. No, you laughing. I'm sure. No, I'm, I, yeah, as soon as you, if you don't I believe me, different. whatever you have now, whether it be fifty cent or a nickel, right. start serving God with it and see what He see take you to that. Now, understand something. The ultimate goal is to make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we can have all the stuff that we can imagine, but and fall short of heaven, we didn't make it where we should have gone. Okay? Or we can have absolutely nothing. I have seen, listen, because of my weird walk in life, I have seen kids that have a mom that is a crack addict that lives up under a cardboard box and then I seen kids that have a mom with five cars and big money in the bank, but the, the one set of kids would die to be with their mom that's a crack addict and a bunch of the couple, but you don't have to believe me, I seen this. You know why? So the point I'm making is that you're not, 
you, your stuff, everybody say your stuff. Your stuff. your stuff doesn't decide whether you're good or not. What you got, brother? You know what? I listened to this song one day. I always want to be a millionaire, billionaire. I think we all do. Yes, sir. I found out that day I was. You were. You know how I was? How? Because I got love in my heart. Love in your heart. All right, I'll be rich forever. Rich yeah. forever. And that's right there. When God sees you, he examines your heart. Uh-huh. That's how you get to heaven. That's how you get to heaven. That's right. Now, understand something now. Uh, please believe, I ain't, God ain't going to take this out. He just told us that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Want. What does want, want has to do with financial romance? It has to do with whatever it is that you lack it. But you can gain the whole world and not have love and it means nothing. It means nothing. If you don't have a good shepherd. Right. That's right. You got to have, what we're talking about today is a good shepherd. All I want you to do is focus and say, look, I need this good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, I've already went over my time. Now, here's the thing. You only have 30 minutes. Yes, ma'am. We need to get you here. We need to get you here. Here's the thing. 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 Listen. Now. I'll come back on the extra day. Oh, extra day. can't do that. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold on. Let's talk about the thing. The shepherd, see, understand something. God does not have arms and legs. Why? Because he is a spirit. God does not bleed. Why? Because he's a spirit. God does not get tired and hungry. Why? Because he's a spirit. So what God said was, because I am a spirit, they might not think I can relate to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap myself in flesh and come to earth mm -hmm. in the form of oh, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And when I come, the reason that I'm sending Jesus Christ to earth is I need to touch them. They need to see me get rained on. They need to see me. If they don't, they'll think I'm some robot. They'll think I'm some too far away. They'll think I can't relate to their situation today. But I'm going to come down to earth and I'm going to allow everybody to say allow. allow. It, you can't take it. I allowed you to have it. I'm going to allow myself to be crucified. The worst calculated death that could have ever happened. Awful. I'm going to allow them to pull my beard. I'm going to allow them to hit me. I'm going to allow them to see me bleed. Because if I don't bleed, there shall be no, without the blood, that's, that's, there's that no salvation. So the blood that he shed on Calvary is the same blood that we need today. Amen. So my point is, if we're here and we have said, you know what, I'm doing pretty good, but I need a good shepherd. Mm. Because there are some things that I want in my life. There are some voids in my life. There are some questions. There are some unanswered questions that I have in my life. Mm -hmm. I, You know what? And the good thing is, I'm going to offer you an opportunity to follow this good shepherd. You know, you have to, all you got to do is, all you got to do is say, you know what? I'm going to make a decision today. That's all it costs. It's a decision. To say, I'm going to follow the good shepherd. This is the good shepherd with your best in mind. Why? Because some hirelings, we talked about hirelings, and I got off it too quickly. Hirelings, they only there to get paid. You know how somebody is. Day Look, labor. all right, now, yeah, day labor. I just now went over to the pen, and I saw your sheep. Now, give me my money. Mm -hmm. Man, you ain't even give no water. I don't care about all that. I need my money. That's all they here for. So are the sheep going to follow that particular person? No. Nope. Some of us think that David was a shepherd. I got you, I understand, and I'm not going to. All I'm telling you, the Bible says that he was a sheep herder. The Bible, now if you read up, what was David's occupation? He was a sheep herder. What's the difference between a sheep herder and a shepherd? He was following the sheep. That means that, you know, somebody had to be behind him just in case. Hey, shepherd, this sheep. Out. So, I'm t so, he went in. so my point is, we need a good shepherd. Who is the good shepherd that we can trust? With our best interest in mind. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. Now understand, I may, I may have given Harlan's a bad name. Because 
because some most of my friends that are pastors call themselves the under shepherd. Mm -hmm. They are, they have a shepherd who is Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. but they, if they're smart enough, they know they're under mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So some hirelings are pretty good. They have they do have they do. I want to do a good job. See, you are, when you come to work at this place, you are get what they call hired. Mm -hmm. You are a hireling. And if you're a, if you're a good hireling, you have the best interest of the people in mind. You see, if you're not, if I don't care where you work at, you can be a trash collector, you can be a a, a dishwasher. You know how important a dishwasher is. Sure if they don't clean those dishes and put them out there, we finna get sick. Yeah. Do you you don't know how important a cra trash collector is until nobody's collecting the trash and disease is everywhere. Yeah. He's a dishwasher. So it's critically important. Critical. There is no, uh, you know how important a cotton picker is? Oh, everybody in here got some cotton on their body What'd right now. Nice and if nobody ever said, I'm ever going to pick cotton again, we're in trouble. So it's important. So whatever job you're hired to do, you have to know that you need a good shepherd. Amen? Amen. Without that shepherd, we're going to be out there saying, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to spray some water on these dishes and throw them over here. Ooh. Why? And I want my money now. At the end of the day, I want my money. But wait a minute, Mr. Dishwasher. Everybody got sick and don't nobody want to come to my restaurant no more. I don't care. I still want my money. Why? Because I'm a hireling. But when you have the best interest of the people in mind, huh? you are a leader, you are a guy, you're a good person. That's what makes you good. And when you are following the good shepherd, that's when you get to the point where you shall not want. Amen? Amen. So my prayer is that somebody got something. We see we're going to be on this for a while because we're going through the whole 23rd song. All right, then. We stop. We need All you right. to get in here and stay different and <laughs> stay on the subject. <laughs> Amen. We enjoy you so much. Amen. Well, listen, before we go, we're going to pray. And we need you for an hour. An hour, okay. I will, we'll do an hour. Listen, I need everybody for a moment. We were talking about meditating, okay? We were talking about meditating. The only way that you can get good at anything is you have to practice. You know, even if you said, you know what? I'm going to be an intravenous drug user. You got to practice. You got to practice. Somebody even got to show you how to do that. If you say, I want to smoke crack for the rest of my life, somebody got to show you. If you say, I want to be a prostitute, somebody got to, it don't matter what you decide to be, somebody has to show you. So I'm going to show, we're, today we're going to practice on meditating. What we're going to do, and what the one thing that's important with meditating is, we have to say, okay, whatever my thoughts are right now, let them go. Remember, we talked about these thoughts. That's why I'm trying to give foundations, so that we're going to keep going. People are going to come in later, and I'm going to say words y'all going to know. Yeah, I remember we talked about that, yeah. but it's going to be too late. You missed it. So, well, I need you to put your mind off of everything right now for one second. This is incredible. Why? Because I have introduced the word of God. And the word of God is in the air right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, he truly has an opportunity to come in and take over your heart now. Because it's in the air. So we're going to open up our heart. That's incredibly important. Because um, if I was a voodoo doctor, I would have been up here, you know, doing voodoo, casting spells, cast smoke going in the air. Uh, doing chants or whatever. Try, why would? Because I want that spirit in the yep, air, yep. so that you can be open to it and it can come. But that's not what I want. We want the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, and He is right now. Okay, and because He is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a three-part prayer. Okay, and in the first part of the prayer, we're going to do a meditation where you just. Sometimes I ask you to say something, but I don't want you to say anything. All I want you to do is give a moment for God to meditate, to come into your heart. So please just turn the phone down if you don't turn it on. Because mine is going off the hook, but that's okay. So I wanted to give God a second to come in. And then I'm going to pray out loud. And then everybody's going to repeat the Lord's Prayer after me. Now the reason, I got to tell you this because the Lord's Prayer is critical. So many people say things that's in the Lord's Prayer that's not. And if you read the King James Version, 
That's what I use. You'll see exactly what I'm going to say in the Lord's Prayer. So let us get ready to go into a moment of meditation. Let us meditate on God. Let us start. Dear Lord God, as we meditate on your word, we give thanks unto all that you've done in our life. Lord God, we, we sincerely apologize and we ask your forgiveness for any sins that we may have committed against you. Lord God, we've tried it our way and our way just did not work out. So here and now, we're asking you to have your way in our life. Help us, Lord God, to do your will. We need you, Lord God, in every aspect of our life. For because we believe and we trust and we know that you are the good shepherd. And because you are the good shepherd, you're going to tell us where to go. You're going to, you're going to tell us what to do. And you're going to lead us into a space where we do not have one. You're going to fill those voids in our life. And with, before it even happens, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord God. And I ask everybody to repeat after me. Our Father, our Father which art in heaven, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth, in earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory forever. Forever. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you all. Thanks for coming. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what a blessing. Amen. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, you see, they know it, though. Yes, indeed. Leaning. Leaning. Yes. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well. We have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.